Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Conscious Party. I hope everybody's having a beautiful day. I hope the sun is shining. I hope the birds are singing. I hope that when you're staring down the barrel of adversity, you start laughing. Ha ha ha, that's nothing. I can take that. That's what I hope. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. I got a great show for you today. I want to welcome everybody to this particular episode where we are honored to host two extraordinary individuals, Graham Ginn and Dr. Randall Hansen, each bringing a unique tapestry of experience and wisdom. The inspiring Graham, a cancer surviving healer, educator, and advocate for the benefit of humanity. Also an incredible swimmer in Texas. Those of you in Texas, I probably don't have to tell that to you. Passionate about addressing pain and suffering, Graham has dedicated his journey to veteran support, helping humanity, and being a voice for those in need. As an ambassador of Heroic Hearts Project and a force in business development, Graham exemplifies the transformative power of resilience and compassion. And now, for those who are wondering who my other guest is, a beacon in the healing revolution, Dr. Randall Hansen, <laughs> an advocate, educator, and thought leader. Dr. Randall is at the forefront of a healing movement that challenges conventional norms. His groundbreaking book, Triumph Over Trauma, takes us on a journey of self-discovery and holistic healing, exploring the profound connections between trauma, psychedelic medicines, and spirituality. His new book, Heal, we're going to be getting into today. And I want everyone just to join us in this unraveling the healing wheel and embracing a new paradigm for healing. Graham and Randall, thank you so much for being here today. Graham, how's it going, man? Let me start off with you, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. I, um, I just feel incredible. I can feel some good energy coming out of this. And uh, I'm connected to an amazing group of people here in Texas that are uh, huge proponents of plant medicine healing. And so we're all communicating with each other. And it's just like a typical Friday. We're all helping each other, you know, and, and we're just trying to move that energy in good ways. Yeah, without a doubt, man. I can't wait to dig into this story. Randall, how's it going, my friend? Uh, it's going great. The sun is actually shining here, which uh, hasn't been for about a week. So I think, George, you helped uh, lift that clouds up. Um, I just want to quickly say about connections. You know, it's amazing the whether God, universe, whatever it is. But, you know, I look at this, I look at this uh, picture in front of me and, you know, George, I, I, Got connected to you, I, I believe, through Hank Foley and uh, never would have had the chance to have all these conversations with you. And then Graham, of course, I met through my partner, Jenny, but so maybe that's a little more easy connection. But still, the power, I just love, as Graham was saying, that that this energy flows around us, those that are... <clears throat> you know, healing, and, and it's not even necessarily the plant medicine space, but I think it's just the healing space that allows this connection and allows this openness and, and sharing. So I'm, I'm definitely excited to be here today and sh with you too. Yeah, me too. It's, uh, it's always amazing to me the way the world works. And this book right here, Heal from Randall, you know, it's got, it's just chock full of so much information. And, and in some ways, I think you found a way to represent so many stories of so many people. You know, there was an ambassador to almost every sort of ailment that's been out there. And when I read it, what, and I think a lot of other people may agree with this, is like you're reading either your story or a story of somebody you know in your family that you loved, a friend like there, and you can really relate to it. Man, and how did, let me, let me just back up for a minute. How did you and Graham, maybe you could talk about your relationship and what the two of you got going on together. Oh, we, well, we can't say that in public. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it, you have you meet these people once in a while that you have an instant bond with. And and Graham is, is, is well, George, you too. But Graham is, is that way. And, you know, from the moment, you know, at, at, in the beginning, it was just he and Jenny talking. And finally, it's like, well, let's bring Rand into this picture. And and then in the moment Graham and I started talking, it was just uh, uh just a deep love, philosophical, conscious connection that uh, uh, it's just been a, a, the greatest benefit. I mean, the, the, the audio books, which we'll get to in a, later, but just the connection with the person, the power, uh, having someone in my life that, you know, shares so many things, but also can be a mirror or reflection to me to if I'm, if I'm going the wrong way, he can, he's more than willing to come out and say, Hey man, think about this or do this differently. And I, I love that. 
Graham, how did you get to be like? How did you get to be like that, man? I I don't know, man. I wasn't always <laughs> like that. You know, I had a uh, had an incredible just kick in the butt by the universe uh, in in late 2020, and it just turned my life around. And uh, you know, I had trauma that was unresolved, and I I I was trying all these different ways to do it: self medication, et cetera, alcohol, yeah. uh, all the bad things, all the things that just lead to an early death. And uh, I just had this flash happen. And of course, things turned around for me when I embraced plant medicine and psychedelics. And, you know, as, as the road was a little bit bumpy from 20 to 2020 to 2024, but uh, October 31st of 2023, um, I left my job. I was in a particular engineering job, um, actually working on renewable projects and stuff like that. But I, I was with a, an oil and gas uh, engineering firm, a really good one, a real small one, but uh, really liked everybody there. Um, and we just weren't very successful in landing, getting renewables built up in that group. So I was left in the lurch. I was like, whoa, all right, what am I going to do? I did have a, tr a trip planned with Heroic Hearts that was already scheduled for Peru. It's like, and, and it's so funny. I'd gone to a, a journey event with my core group and it was like two days later, it was October 31st. I mean, it was that weekend. There was huge shifts happening, right? I mean, and, and, they know the Scorpio and the horoscope side of it and the, mm -hmm. all the, I, and I don't know all that stuff. I just knew I was going to get, something was going to happen. And uh, the facilitator is like, you have something huge happening coming up and bam, I got released. I mean, the universe just stepped in and goes, you need to find something else, son. And so that's what I did. I went off to Peru, came back. And then I just happened to notice on LinkedIn because I follow what, you know, Randall's posting all the time. He's posted daily. And he said, anybody know how to do, or anybody wanted, has experience doing voiceover? And I PM'd him immediately. And I said, you know, 20 years ago, I did a couple of commercials. I, it was nothing I really followed through. Bam. And he said, dude, this is great. Because he's been looking at all these other people. They were, they were charging, they wanted to charge crazy amounts of money yeah. to do book production. And I'm like, come on, man, I'm your budget guy. So anyways, uh, that's that's how we did it. And it's been wonderful working with him. He's been super patient. This last month has not been the fastest. You know, I had to go. We we did we did um, Peru. Then I got Giardia. Uh, I have a weakened immune system from six rounds of chemo and 33 rounds of radiation to the neck because I had stage four throat cancer. But it look, immune systems down about three thousand uh, units per microliter for white blood cell right now. So that's it. I'm, I'm on the cusp. I'm getting better. And I really shifted my my um, diet here into into overdrive here recently. Um, but anyways, th that was the collaboration. It just was like divine intervention, and we just right. moved forward. And as I'm reading the book, I'm like, gosh, the, like I know these thoughts. I'm just like, yeah. it's like I'm talking to my group. I'm talking to friends. Mm -hmm. So it's been a wonderful process. I, I, let me just jump in. I have to say, I, I was um, Graham just finished recording the Heal book today mm -hmm. uh, or yesterday, and I was listening to it uh, this morning. And it's, it was a it's going to sound really bad ego, and I don't care because it's Friday and I'm happy. But I'm listening to it in a combination of Graham's voice, which you can hear it now, but you hear it in the audio, and it it's just so smooth. And then some of the wordsmithing that I did, I was like. I was listening to him like, oh my God, this is really, this is really a good book. And I said, so that's my one little ego burst today. I'm, I'm done, but it's the voice that really did it. I just listening to it and I'm, I've never been a big audio book uh, person. I've done it a few times, but I tend to get too distracted. Like if I'm just listening, I'm, oh, but look at the bird over there. And then I miss a whole paragraph. But, you know, when you have a narrator like this, that's just so smooth and, and he brings in the, the other great thing about Graham is he knows the space. So he brings in the, that energy and that, that positivity. And also obviously knows the words. Uh, one of the problems with, if you hire someone, uh, you either get on the very low end, you get the AI voice that, you know, it just has no inflect, you know, it's nah, 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 nah. or you have the, you know, 20,000. Uh, and I think Graham's could easily be in that 20,000 range because his voice is just so smooth you know it there's something to be said about a new about communication and when i think about communication that resonates i think a harmony i think a symphony mm. and i just want to pan back for a minute and and have people understand Graham's story randall's story and this book story like when when you get just your toe in the water of what graham's been through with having the the 
throat cancer and, you know, having the world give him a swift kick in the ass. He probably deserved part of it anyway. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, <laughs> you only, you begin to have and see, and I think you can hear in voices, the lived experience of the other. And isn't it interesting when you when you put the call out, Randall, someone with the voice of experience, not only in audiobooks, but with the life experience of tragic events and how to see them as a gift to get over. Like that's not a coincidence. When those things come together, that's a confluence of energy that brings together a message that can resonate. And I like I I can't stop thinking about the the way in which sometimes on plant medicine, you get this different perspective and you can see the parts of the whole and be like, oh, of course it fits like that. And when I look at the two of you together, being on the podcast, the stories in the book, playing a part, like I can't help but think that we're all parts of this whole. And it's so wonderful to get to see the har harmony play out that way, right? What, what do you guys thought? Do you got any thoughts on that? Go ahead, Ray. No, no, I'll let you go. <laughs> I love this. He's the author. I mean, he should, he should expound on this. Uh, all I know is that uh, I think when people get on a healing path, it just, it does, it changes perspective and changing that perspective. I, you know, I had a, a mushroom journey that the whole last hour of it, the mushrooms were basically saying perspective, perspective in different ways, but it was like, okay, I get the message. And it, but it, it's, and it's such a simple, it's such a simple, yeah, a simple shift, but it has a profound impact it, to say, you know, if you always have one way you look at something and, and you hear in the back of your head perspective and you pull back like, oh, wait, no, I see that now in a totally different way. And that, I guess that's what I'm hoping with, you know, with these books and with, with all my posts is just, just reaching people in a different way so they can, they can change their perspective about psychedelics and plant medicine or about nutrition or about movement or somatics, breath work, that kind of thing. Yeah. My, my perspective on this is, you know, what psychedelics have done for me. Um, you know, I had dabbled in this stuff when I was younger, when I was in college, you know, like we all did, right. You know, I, I messed around with LSD, oh, not very much with, with mushrooms. I smoked a bit of pot, you know, I was a swimmer in college. <laughs> I, you know, I was, I was drinking and doing all these other things. And I just, the psychedelics kind of came into my life and then they just drifted out. And I didn't, I didn't realize, I mean, I got a glimpse. It was, I could almost hear it say, you have, you do not need to drink. You don't need to drink Graham, but man, I was just a demon. Like back then I was such a terror and I was just really killing myself, man, from, from all angles. And um, it's funny how, like at the age of 49, I got the opportunity again. And I was just like, Okay, I've been a 35 year student of like spirituality. I always knew I had these little guideposts kind of taking me, steering me. And it's so funny the people who follow the spiritual path or have investigated this stuff, I they all say the same thing. There's like these little kernels that have been dropped and you pick it up and you're like, oh, wait, that resonates, completely resonates with me. You're like, you don't know why. And you just keep following that. And so one of the beautiful things, I call it the plan. Right. That's what the plan is. The plan sits up here and, and either we discover it in our lifetime or we sail past it. And the plan's been sitting there the whole time kind of waving at you <laughs> as your life is going by you. And, you know, whether it's healing, healing can be a, a, a class within the plan. And then you get healed and then you kind of jump in and you're like, oh, I get this new perspective. Or if you in, you get into psychedelics, you're like, oh, wait, this is almost like extra credit. Well, I'm I'm getting the vibration and the feeling of unity and it's that overreaching. And, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but it's just kind of the way I, I saw it. It was like I had a dream and I, when I woke up from the dream, I was hyper focused on this thing um, of how we help each other. And so I see how much Randall has wanted to reach out and help others, how you, George, you want to get out and help and, and, and help others. I want to get out and help others. It's it's this gnawing thing. It's within us. It's. I'll tell you what, once you're imbued with it, you can't ignore it. It's, I mean, I'm feeling it right now yeah. and it's just, I, I don't want to weep, but it is just like the, the emotions are so strong and how I feel about helping humanity right now. Mm. We're, we're just on this cusp. We're on this huge cusp and we're going to have a lot of people that are, are in the, in these deep, dark doldrums. And man, these two manuals for healing and curing yourself 
in some very unconventional ways that we should be turning to that have been practiced for thousands of years and we've ignored it. And now we're coming back to it. These are like manuals for returning to sitting around the fire with your mm-hmm. fellow, you know, buddies and, and, and really get deep. So this is, I'm, I just love this. I love this platform. That's a great question, man. It's, it sings to my heart and I, it's so, it's so interesting to think, you know, whether it was triumph over trauma or this book heal, one thing, one of many things that I take away from it is that so the, it's not so much about going and learning what the answers are as receiving the answers. And they kind of revealed to you on some level, on some of my psychedelic journeys, it's like, oh, it was like a, and it, and it brings up this idea of revelation. You know what I mean? Like this is revealed to you. Here's this thing that you've been pushing down. You've been running away from. Let me look, you can look at it from this angle over here and it doesn't have a sharp teeth. Look at it from this angle over here, and it's not trying to punch you in the face. And then you can confront it a little bit. You know what, Randall, maybe you could share. I can't imagine the different insights and the different conversations you had working with the different authors and going through this. But maybe you can share with us in the audience, you know, something, one one or a few things that profoundly changed you as you were working through this book, Heal. Ah, fantastic. <clears throat> Let me just say one thing first about what Graham said, because I, yeah. I love it, and it's so true. In all the all the stories of people that have uh, done psychedelics, whether it's through in the book or in my uh, psychedelic society, almost everyone has had that previous experience, whether college or the the rave scene or something like that, and then they've gone away, and sometimes for decades, and now all of a sudden they're rediscovering it. But the cool part is, so often, even in a recreational uh, experience you can get those lessons like Graham talked about. You hear maybe very very faint, or maybe it's not as strong when you're intentionally doing it, but you still get some of that message come through if you're really listening. So I think that's where the intentionality of psychedelics is so important because if we're trying to hear the message, that's a different thing than it's way in the background. But uh, for me, I guess the stories are, if I said put one word, I'd say hope. You know, all these stories, I read them or the conversations, it's all about hope and transformation that that you can be in the the depths of despair or the depths of shame or the deepest pit of anger and depression, and yet you can find a way out. And it doesn't have to be one method. It might, and sometimes it might take five different methods or five different things to do. And, and as, as you've talked about, find the thing that resonates with you. But yeah, I'd say the the thing that, and I still, I'll still look at these stories. And in fact, I couldn't even, in listening, I couldn't listen to any of the stories that Graham recorded for Heal. I started the first part of it and I stopped and because they will make me weep because it's just, you just feel the power of hope and transformation coming from these stories. And I actually had someone on LinkedIn say, why do we need stories? Uh, you know, I have, I have my story. I don't need to read anybody else's story. And I'm like, no, you're missing the point. Yes, your story is the most important to you. But but if you're looking for inspiration or you're looking for hope, then these stories are ways to do that. And on the flip side of that, I had uh, one of the storytellers in Triumph Over Trauma tell me that she still rereads the stories in those books in that book you know every every other month or something like that because it's actually helping her with her integration so she's using these stories to help integrate her healing even further and so i think there, that's to me that's the the highlight that uh it's i like the content of that i wrote in the book because i think it's helping frame the information but the storytellers get all the really all the glory because they're the ones that that risk exposing themselves being vulnerable and sharing this stuff so that everyone else can learn from it yeah and and george your story in there i mean i i resonated immediately with it i mean i was like oh my gosh i i knew i was like whoa whoa this is this is george's story (laughs) so uh to anybody listening out there uh george's own story was in there and how it was um you know, the universe does this incredible thing. You can call it God, Jesus, whatever right. it is. They will they will whack you upside the head with a bat and be like, 
you need to wake up and this is where you came from. And now I want you to return and I want you to move your life in alignment with the plan. <laughs> And so that's, uh, that's like in every one of these stories is like that in both books, yep. in Heal and in Triumph. We've got 23 vignettes, I think, in, in Triumph. And I forgot how many we had in Heal. Is it 11? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, each of those stories. And what's great about what Randall did when he gathered those stories is that each one is different. Each one is so different. And you're like, OK, that doesn't resonate. With me. Oh, my God, I, that resonates with me. <laughs> and age groups are different. So you can have a 65 yeah. year old person going, I've seen it all. You're going to have a, you know, a 19 year old is like, okay, well, I identify with the Gen Z's, you know, I, these are some of my people. And that's, what's just so great about it. It's just going to hit a large swath of the population. There'll be a lot of people that get out a lot out of this. Yeah. I, I kind of see Rand's book is like a padded two by four. You know what I mean by that? <laughs> like it's going to come sure. over. And just For sure. Whack you. For sure. Like, man, when I, when I was reading in there too, like I cry, man. Like I, I, I know a lot of this, like a lot of the people stories that I read, I can't help but be brought to tears. Not that like I'm sad and then I'm wah, crying like I can't get out the floor or something like that, but yeah. like it resonates with my heart. Like I'm not alone. I am not alone. It's everybody. And the more stories I read, it's like the more faith I have in humanity. Like, okay, that, you know what? Maybe this, maybe people will understand why I was such an asshole. You know, like, look, you know, maybe. And then that gives me the ability to be like, I understand why that person's upset. This mm. person's going through some real trauma right now. And now we have this bridge of empathy that we can yeah. both walk oh. across or meet halfway and at least look each other in the eye and be like, I know what you're going through. You know what I mean? The, the biggest thing that I look back on my journey uh, from December 20 and then forward and all the subsequent journeys I've been on. And recently this last trip to Peru where I did ayahuasca three days in a row. I, you know, and there's lots of, there's lots of men out there in the world that are just angry, yep. right? There's yep. just this anger underneath. It's like, I can't provide enough for my family. I can't be a, a big enough role model for my, my, my kids. I did the wrong thing. You know, I yelled at my son too, too much when, you know, and at X, Y, Z, I mean, there's just all these things and we shoulder this stuff for yep. such a long time, man. It's like the plants go, you're forgiven and it's okay. And that anger can be flushed from you. And it just does. And I try to explain to everybody like, well, I'm not going to get anything out of it. I didn't have any trauma. And I'm like, well, do you, you hear your tone? You got a little bit of anger in there. And uh, it wouldn't it be great to just wake up in the morning and be like, oh, I never have to raise my voice or throw a cup across a, a, a room or, <laughs> yeah. and so that's been the biggest, biggest like aha thing for me that I love now. And I just keep unpacking, of course, yeah. you know, because you get this eternal integration. It's like the plants just keep going. Hey, man, just there's more stuff for you. That's the beautiful thing about integration. It's another thing he hits in his book. How important the intention, the set and setting and the integration, the Trinity is so important in psychedelic healing. Yeah. Yeah, that's really well yeah, said. And, and, I, and I would say the integration is important for all healing. I mean, it, you know, it, it's it's this constant keeping yourself not in check. That's maybe too negative a word, but it's, it's this constant checking with the universe kind of thing with, am I still good? Am I still good? So that, you know, this idea of integrating once and then you're done. Yeah, no, it is. It is really a lifetime of integration and, and learning these lessons. Yeah. Isn't it interesting how each person who, you know, I, I can, I can speak to the idea of psychedelics. That's what I'm familiar with, but isn't it interesting how you get this individual type of medicine for you? And then you, maybe you can get some help with the integration, but it's up to you to really interpret what that situation is. And it's almost like when I think about interpretation, I go, wow, you have to interpret the events that happened to you during this psychedelic journey. And then you're like, wow, I'm interpreting what this plant is saying to me. Wow, I'm interpreting the environment around me. Wow, as I interpret the environment around me, I create the environment around me. Like it just keeps going on this. What maybe either one of you could talk to this idea of it, interpretation and translation. <laughs> <laughs> I will absolutely speak yeah. to this because yeah. I had done the December 20 journey. My God, it 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 it's like the plants shot something inside of me. And, it, and I felt it in my heart, like where I, I did this, you know, uh, it's totally underground. Right. But I mean, 
I was left with almost like somebody, sh I, I think of a movie where like somebody's like the alien is shot inside of yeah. you, but it's a good thing, right? You know, I just get this like glowing energy. I had opened up chakra portals. I mean, like I had blocked a block, you know, like orange chakra area. The sacral area was completely blocked because of that sexual trauma. And when that thing came open, I mean, like all this energy shot up into my heart. It's, it's ineffable. I can't describe it to, you know, to the degree. Yeah. That transformation within two weeks, I immediately knew I needed to contact somebody so I could I could do something to help veterans. Right. So we ended up with that strain of energy. I went and I contacted, found a, a, a willing doctor at the VA who would listen to like my pleas. I, I used some Zoom info data to I cold called Rick Doblin and talked to him on the cell phone. <laughs> For like an hour. And I That's said, so man, awesome. I'm left with this energy. I don't know what to do with He's like, you need to help your veterans. You need to find a VA that'll listen to you. Well, then I found this doctor, which is Dr. Lynette Averill. She had been doing work with the Midhoffers up in New York, you know, through the Yale, Yale, and, um, through Yale and, and some other combinations of uh, psychedelic research studies. Anyway, she was down here in Houston. So we, we join up and then she introduces this politician and, you know, uh, Alex Dominguez, who's a Democrat from South Texas, and he has his bill for psilocybin and he wants to, he wants to get some legs to it. And he wants it to like, there's no way we're going to get it passed in Texas. And I said, yes, you are. I had immediately made all these connections with Marcus Capone and Amber Capone, just two dear people, great friends of mine, Andrew Marr. Um, and then they brought this whole other group. I went to Jesse Gould. This was heroic hearts. That's how we got in engaged. And then he wrote a testimonial that right there, that is so transformative how those plants did all this, right? That's, I don't even know if I'm addressing the question, but I mean, that is the reverberation and people don't understand when they're on the fence or, or they're like turned off by psychedelic medicine. I'm like, this could be your life. I mean, who knows what you have inside of you that could change the world that that's been dormant in there for like your whole life. Um, it's, it's been, I, 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 it's hard to describe because along the way it is in the way I look back at it now is like, I was just damaged and it's like, it's pulling off the bad energy as you move through life, right? The, these little bad energy things are, are moving off of you with each of your psychedelic journeys that you go on. And I got to say, I had like the greatest facilitators on the planet that I've worked with mm -hmm. the most kind. It, I really believe we pre-planned this from my life. Before, like, I think we all got together and we said, hey, we're going to go to Earth. You're going to go in the 50s. Graham, you're going to go in the 70s. You're going to go in the 80s, blah, blah, blah. And we're all going to meet. And we're going to have this collaborative moment. And it's going to be around the time when the Earth is shifting. Mm -hmm. And that's what I feel. I've, I'm like, I, I can't get away from the fact that I feel this is completely predestined. All this. Wow. It's wild. I know I'm creating, but I also feel like it was put in place by myself and these other people. And this is a co-creation thing that we're doing on the planet. And the veterans leading the charge of this, they were perfect to be the first. They're all type A. They're like, give me whatever to get me out of this hell. I will take whatever you can give me. <laughs> so it, it was, it, it's, it's just been wonderful, especially working with Jesse's group. I got to go to Peru and watch these veterans. I mean, I, I it was six, seven, yeah, six of them. And uh, there was eight down there and, and to watch these veterans really, there was about a core six of them. And I just watched them completely change. It's just been, that's the greatest thing about being there. You know, yeah. that's the greatest thing for anybody who, who gets into this space. Cause you start seeing other healing and there's nothing like witnessing it yourself. It changes you when you see somebody heal. Like, yeah. So, yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Um, it's, it's, you know, working alongside my partner, Jenny, with Heroic Hearts and seeing the veterans before, you know, dead eyes almost sometimes and face drawn and just almost no life energy within them. And then after the ayahuasca retreat, smiling, their eye, you can actually see their eyes are more alive and you can see, and this is just the beginning of their healing because then they have all the integration, but it's just so amazing to see. I mean, it literally is night and day in that sense. I mean, you can, you can see it in the people's just in their face, let alone their actions and what goes on beyond that. Um, and, and Graham, I, you know, I, I love what you're saying. I, I think that for me, it, it's, I never see it. 
I can say, I rarely see it in the moment. I feel, I sometimes feel like I feel uh, since the beginning of this year, which maybe is just all psychological, whatever, but I feel, uh, the, I do feel the energy shifting. I do feel this winds of healing blowing and this positive energy. But I also think that sometimes I don't, I don't see it in the moment. I look back last year and I'm like, oh, there was that where that was happening and I wasn't paying attention and then, oh, there and that. And so some, I think a lot of times we're just, you know, partly asleep to this energy, to this consciousness, to, and so we just go about our lives and we think we're doing the best we can. And uh, the psychedelics especially wake us up for sure. Sure. Wake us up. Don't you all believe? I mean, we can all feel it, right? I mean, yeah. and you see it every day. And hell, if you watch the news every day, yeah. you're like, what in the hell is going on? Things are yeah. coming apart. Yeah. People can't yeah. get in, in. They can't agree with one another. Nobody wants to listen to each other's side. It's so politically divided. We have disasters constantly. I mean, like, I've never seen it so cold in Texas in all my life. You know, I've never <laughs> seen it so hot here in all my life. I'm like, man, these are polar shifts back and forth. I'm like, this should be waking you up. That's yeah. something grand is happening now do you either of you have you ever read any dolores cannon books i've seen some videos but i haven't read any of the books so I'm, i've been on this reading binge audio uh, audible reading binge and so i've been downloading her books and just like okay. reading but i couldn't have i couldn't have downloaded what she had to say had i not spent 30 years reading shakti Gawain's creativity you know uh creative visualization reading um Oh, what was it? The um, oh, the one based in Peru, the Celestine Prophecy, mm -hmm. like, you know. And then, then all of all of, I mean, all of Jane's books that were um, the Seth series, you know, the Bhagavad Gita, the Paramahansa, you know, Yogananda, the Autobiography of a Yogi. It's and there's like thousands of books in there, and I'm glad I was reading all those things. And finally, I, I got to Raw, the Law of One, the Raw Contact, the Law of One, which just was like. It immediately it blew my mind. I was like, okay, I see. It's all connected. This mm. is the end tome that I had to read was, was mm. the, raw, the raw contract. That's R-A, the raw contact. It was channeled uh, through, um, I forgot her name, um, Eckhart. I think it was her last name. She's passed. But mm. she was the channel by which these two, Dan Elkins and another gentleman, recorded this in 1981. Anyways, that information would never have computed when I listened to Dolores Cannon's books. And I listened to Dolores Cannon's book. The Convoluted Universe series is amazing. She has another one called Between Life and Death. If you don't know anything about Dolores Cannon, she was a quantum healing hypnotherapist. Oh, wow. she, she was not a channeler. She was just writing down what or taping what these, you know, these people were saying under trance. It's it's absolutely fascinating. And now our, our group, our, you know, psychedelic study group, we share this stuff and everybody's like, I absolutely. And we all agree that this stuff is all going because she talks about where we are today, end of times, kind of getting to where the, the planet's shifting. You know, this is the thing that they talked about in Revelation. It's like, yeah. this is the earth splitting apart. And there's this fifth dimensional versus 3.6 dimensional earth that's moving in this direction. And so those who are opening their hearts and getting more spiritual and communing and getting higher in frequency and abandoning things that were holding us down, that allows us to get to that next step and move on with that graduating earth. Anyways, that's a bit of a diatribe, but mm -hmm. it's uh, it's funky. It's very strange to a lot of people. I don't bring it up too much. <laughs> this is very different, but everybody can feel that. Yeah. I'm like, get into psychedelics. You will be able to feel what's happening. You'll see it. So, yeah. Sometimes you get shown the light in the strangest of places if you look at it right. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. hilarious. There, man. But that's perspective too. Yeah. yeah, I was listening to those words. I was like, man, Robert, you're not making any sense, man. I like, see the joint, uh, and now I'm like, oh wow, okay, yeah, so, yeah. Interesting though. What I think that that's another flavor. You know, if be it the Bhagavad Gita, be it going to a dead show. In some ways, these are all forms of ceremony you know when you whether you're alone and you're sitting with someone and listening to things or whether you're in a group and you're listening to music and 
we have lost this idea of ceremony in the Western world, this attachment to spirituality that comes from listening to those around us, even listening to the quiet around us. And I think that's with the spirit, with this fifth dimension, with the magnetic pole, with, with everything that's happening, you're beginning to see the reemergence of ceremony, even if it's this, if it's in this book, Heal, if it's in the process of you reading this book on Audible, if it's you sitting in a room and reading this or talking about it with friends, I think that we're beginning to engage in ceremony at a level that's been absent in the last hundred years or since the, the revolution here in the U.S. What do you think? Easily. Yeah, we've completely baked it out of our civilization, right? Yeah. With the Industrial Revolution, yes. I mean, we took away uh, fermented foods. We started yeah. canning everything. Oh, we know better, but there's still... And for, for tens of thousands of years, we've had cultures have had fermented foods and we didn't realize that we were just destroying our gut. I now, I, and it's just recently, yeah. I started to realize that my gut microbiome was in a really terrible place. And I mean, I had like four surgeries almost like in a row. I, I broke my hip like 12 years ago. I was given massive antibiotics, surgical antibiotics. I can't name the really bad one that they give you, mm. you know, the one it. Anyways, I, you get this plethora of them. And then I, I have a cordy compression about six or seven years ago. That that was just to give life to a dying hip. I had necrosis of the hip. Finally, I get the replacement of the hip, right? Then I had another surgery. I mean, I was getting crushed with antibiotics. Not one of those doctors ever said, hey, you need. we need to restore all the, the good stuff that we killed in your belly. Please avoid sugar, soda, coffee, alcohol, all this stuff. Man, I was going, I just went right back into it. I like glug, glug, glug as much beer as I could. I mean, I just roasted my belly. So when I went into cancer treatment, I was already at 5,000. My, you know, I was at five, like five is like your WBC count, right? On the scale. So I was at, at 5,000 units, uh, micro units uh, or, or units per microliter. And unbeknownst to me that I was going in there with this crappy set of tools in my belly. So this is like, I'm now realizing how strong that was, how much I needed to, um, I was ill-prepared. The chemo just went in there and just wiped everything out, right? And so it's just been this rebuilding back. And I really believe because of this, us getting out of the industrial revolution mindset of where we've, we've turned to processed, highly refined foods and everybody's awash in this sea of just awful foods that is just destroying everybody's bellies. I'm just glad I've stepped outside of it and I now have this path forward to healing myself. I've been like, you know, juicing with a whole head of cabbage and celery and apples, lemons uh, and ginger every single morning for the last week. I mean, I was on omeprazole and PPIs to try to keep the acid down for 48 days and I knew it was starting to make me sick. So I pulled myself off of them and then went to whole whole food juicing, you know, and, and, and Rand talks about that in his books. He's talking about whole nutrition, how important it is. So... I know I ramble a bit. No, that's no, good because good. I think that's right. I mean, I look around my property and I have a bunch of what the state and county call noxious weeds, but these are native. Some of these are native plants that uh, indigenous knew how to use. You know, we 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 go to the pharmacy to get our 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 health when the indigenous and Native Americans went to to the ground to the earth. And so, yeah, uh, you know, we have, we are so disconnected from nature, uh, from our food supply. Uh, I, I just learned, I, I always wondered why school cafeterias all seem to have really crappy food in the more, in the last couple of decades. Mm -hmm. And it turns out there was a law that was passed, uh, a federal law that all school cafeterias had to uh, at least break even. And so what the school systems did, I guess one found out and they all copied it, is they got rid of their kitchen, they got rid of their, 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 their high cost of employees, and they hired Cisco and some of these other food service companies to come in and do the food for them. And all that food is this uh, ultra processed crap. Uh, that's a whole other mistake that we made about fat and, and sugar, uh, mixing that those two up. But and so we wonder why our, our the, the the kids in school have attention problems, have have hyperactivity problems because they're getting dessert at their at their school lunches, literally a dessert. I mean, I was amazed they put sugar in bread. I mean, that still blows my mind. You know, sugar in bread, but 
that's what they do. Yeah. You know, my, my, my wife and I, and, and a lot of our friends, uh, obviously I've been in the energy industry for a long time. We, you know, live in a middle to upper class kind of lifestyle. So you can go and eat out, right? I'm going out to eat and going out to eat. And I was like starting to pay attention. I'm like, man, a Cisco truck just pulled out of the back of that place <laughs> and this place too. And I was like, anybody looked up Cisco? That's not just a catchy name. Look it up. It's like System Corporation. You're like, whoa, that's not like something out of Wally, right? <laughs> it was floating around a floating, you know, a sunrester with a with a shake of goo with the most <laughs> processed crap in it. And everybody's just swelling up. <laughs> I'm like, I need to stop eating out. Like this needs to stop, you know? So it really, I'm really picky about where we go out and eat. On it, you know, we're going out to eat with some friends tonight. I'm like, I, I'm already looking at the menu, going, all right, what, where can I avoid? How can I avoid? Because you know they're going to cook everything in seed oils, right? And that's it. When I was down there in Peru, um, a couple of the facilitators that were down there, really sharp young 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 people that were down there, um, they every one of us like, you know what, you, we don't have down here that you guys have up there in the states is is y'all have seed oils. We don't use them down here. And, I, and it's like everybody's skin looked good. There was this vibrancy. Um, so there's something to that. Obviously, I, I follow a lot of people on YouTube that speak about this. Um, I, both sides. You know, I was keto for a little bit. I used keto to, to drop some weight. I had a fatty liver. I needed to get that all done. I knew it was not sustainable. And so this kind of changing over to a more vegetarian, whole foods-based diet was necessary for me, you know, especially after cancer. So. Yeah. But, you know, even diet we've gotten wrong because, you know, we have these it, it's almost like it's it's just all to distract us. You know, we have the vegans versus the carnivores and it's like a fight to the death. And it's like, no, eat what your body wants. Just eat the real food. Don't eat the ding dongs or the uh, Doritos, you know, but you don't have to. You know, there's no one diet that works for everyone. You know, keto, carnivore vegan, Mediterranean, they work for some people. And so just find what resonates for you. But the, like, the, like Graham said, the bottom line is if you are, uh, and the statistic is something like a really high percentage of people eat at a fast food restaurant every day. I mean, something like 80% eat at least wow. one meal. So, and, you know, and some of these fast food places now have uh, the, the, the loyalty program. So you can get, you know, like, whatever a taco a day or something horrible like that and i just i just want to you know i just want to go and shake everybody up or stand in line in front of all these fast food places and say do you know what you're putting into your system and what it's doing to it and if they don't see it on a day-to-day -day basis they don't realize it but you know we look at um the, the increase in colon cancer, especially among younger folks who have been eating the, the ultra process their entire lives, no fiber in that ultra process. Or we look at the, the diminishing, the, the declining of our longevity, our lifespan. Yeah. And so, but, you know, if we're in our prime, we're, we're not thinking about dying. We're not thinking about, you know, oh, I'm going to lose 10 years of my life if I keep eating this food. And so I, I, I really hope what, what George, you said, Graham, that, you know, this is a great awakening because, you know, otherwise there is going to be, I don't know. I, I just, uh, I have to stay on the positive side of that because I, I just get, I'll get too bogged down in the sadness of, of, of too many people dying early or, uh, or having cancer or all these other disease, heart attacks from this crappy food that we have. I, I don't ever want anybody to go through what I went through with, with being treated for cancer. And it was such a, I'm glad I was equipped at least with psychedelic medicine when I went to, you know, it, this is not a knock against MD Anderson. They did an incredible job of healing me, of, of doing targeted therapy. I had amazing doctors that work with me. They warned me of the, 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 the possibilities of some negative side effects of this stuff. I was totally prepared. Um, in all of these hospitals, and I'm just, it's a, it's a wide net. I went into a couple of them, not just MD Anderson. When you're looking at their cafeterias uh -huh. and I was sitting there looking and I'm looking around at people as I'm, you know, and I, tr I, I did, they have some healthy options. I picked the healthy options, but I'm sitting there looking around at all these people. 95% of them are drinking Diet Coke, right? <laughs> then they all have yellow food on a plate. And I'm like, you're being treated for cancer and yeah. you're wondering where everything came from. You know, I mean, it's just this amalgamation, just like Clint had put a note on here, school serve prison food. It's not just in schools. I mean, crud, it's just incredible where yeah. I've seen this. 
this going on. I, I, I hope heal is a wake up call. People just go, all right, I'm going to, and it, it, right. Most people look, even if you just eat at fast food every day and you don't prepare your own meals, start small, start cooking one meal at your house, okay. just do one meal. And then from there, let's see what that turns into. Does that feel good? Can I, can I expand on this? Hey, if stir fries is what you do with some goopy sugar coated sauce, Hey, better for you to do that first. That gets you starting. So, yeah. And, and, you know, it doesn't have to be, uh, I, you know, I'm not a chef by any means and my meals are pretty simple, yeah. uh, but they're all real food, grass fed beef. Uh, I have a neighbor who does ch raises chickens and give, I get to buy the eggs from her. And so these are all good, solid, you know, basics to eat to cooking. And you don't have to do a five course meal for your family every night. You know, I mean, I wouldn't, sorry, I wouldn't do that even for myself. And so, yeah, it just starts simply. It, it, it's, you know, uh, even just start looking at labels. My gosh, you look at labels, you'll be turned away pretty quickly when you don't know what half the ingredients are because there are, you know, polysorbate dextrose, you know, dye number four, and and that's not even counting the glyphosate that's probably in most of the stuff that's not even listed because it's not an official ingredient, but it's there because that's how the, the grains were grown with glyphosate. Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting on a, there's this old saying that says you are what you eat. Mm -hmm. And, and on some level, you know, when I, when you look at the indigenous wisdom and the way they cultivate not only their plants, but their animals, you know, and we look at things in our lives for all the athletes, like we know about muscle memory, mm -hmm. you know, there's a, I did a podcast a while back with Dr. Thomas Verney and he spoke about, you know, transplants and animals and what we consume. And it's not too far fetched to think that if we are eating animals who spend their whole life in a sort of, you know, agrarian prison, like yeah. what, what are we getting from that? Like, exactly. why is it that we're eating animals that are caged in, in a prison and we're living like prisoners in a way? Like Clinton just says, schools serve prison food, hospitals serve prison food. Well, what does it mean when you're in a place that serves prison food? Where, where are you at? If you're eating prison food, are you, are you, def are you not there all mentally? Probably not. Right. When you start taking some psychedelics yeah. on some level, maybe that's why you begin to use the word awaken. You begin to see the world around you. Maybe now that you are getting some of the nutrients, maybe you get energy from the sun, the same way a plant uses photosynthesis when you and take that plant into your body. Now, maybe you get the sun to enlighten you a little bit. And you start, Hey, start making some changes in your life. Like, you know what? Another thing that they have, when you were speaking about some of the people in Peru that you went to, not only do they not have seed oils, but they have people come over to their house for dinner. How many mm -hmm. of us rely on, hey, I'm going to go out here and have some friends. Why don't you have your neighbor come over? Why don't you sit down and, hey, check out this book that this guy just wrote. Why don't we sit down at my table, <laughs> you know, and and yeah. here, I got some, uh, I just picked some stuff out of my garden over yeah. here, man. Try try these leaves. Want to try some erythoxium coca? Here, chew on this leaf for a little bit. See how you feel, you know? <laughs> I, I, I totally agree with this. I mean, that's, in, you know, back to your original point, you know, we, we got into this process society. Yeah. That's where we live. We've been a process society. Yeah. And then I watched two young, young boys today. I was on my way to the gym and they're both standing next to one another and they're both probably 16, 17 years old. They are both morbidly obese wow. and each of them are walking like this and they've got flip-flops on with socks, you know, and they're wearing like gym stuff. And I can just tell that where are they walking? They're walking straight down. And I know they came from an apartment complex. They're walking to the McDonald's. Neither of them is talking to one another and they're engaged in this. I'm like, man, we've created these robots. This is Wally. -E. I'm seeing Wally. -E. It's like starting to happen slowly. And, you know, to get back to how do we yeah. heal out of this? How do we hijack ourselves out of this thing? You know, I hope that these messages get out to enough people that go, Hey, hon, maybe we shouldn't get Kentucky fried chicken for the kids tonight. <laughs> and, 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 and let's 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 not watch a movie tonight. Let's actually sit down and we'll just use an app that like comes up with questions that we can ask each other and we can start wow. engaging with our own children and our and our loved ones and maybe make a healthier meal. And hopefully this is just this is just the beginning. I mean, we're immersed in this stuff right now and, and we've yeah. got to, we have got to get people to wake up and realize they're inside of a, a, a food system that is unfortunately going to kill them. It's going to kill everybody on this planet if we don't wake up to this stuff. Yeah. yeah. 
I think it speaks to the idea of not loving yourself on some level too. Like it mm-hmm. seems that we've been conditioned to, you know, been conditioned to think of ourselves as less than we truly are. And nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, there's genius all around us. I talk to young kids all the time. And I'm like, I never thought, I'm like 50. I never thought about that. How'd you think about that? And you see their face light up like, what? That's mm-hmm. genius. I never thought of that. Yeah. Me? Yeah, you. You yeah. know, but, and I think that there's this idea of self-love. And when we look at this book, Heal or Triumph Over Trauma, I think that one of the major factors to all of this dis-ease that we see is this, this absence of self-love. Yeah. How, what, can you speak to that a little bit, Randall? Yeah, I, I think that is definitely the, 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 the greatest thing that comes from healing. There, you know, I look at so many people that are struggling in their marriages and, and they, it's not that they're not understanding of what love is or, or compatible, but if you don't love yourself, if you don't have love for yourself, you can't accept love from other people. And you probably have a hard time giving love also because you don't understand why that's so important. So uh, I think that that is the biggest thing. And that's kind of the hurdle I'm still trying to get over because I, I've shifted. You know, I started with trying for trauma. Trauma is too strong a word for people. So then I went to heal seems to be a little more receptive. But I think people still don't even get that. They, they're like, you know, what we've been saying, they're just kind of in this autotron life and they're just going you know, yes, work from home changed things a little bit, but otherwise you're just still doing the same thing. And so then I've switched to, well, live your best life. What's missing from your life? And I think that's, if, if you can find, you know, because trauma can, can, can rocket you to success. I mean, you, because the trauma is so bad, you are, you're doing anything you can to avoid that trauma. So you are working 24 seven to, 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 but it's still going to crash and burn at some point. It's still a house of cards that you built and it's going to fall. And when you get that self-love, you can start to rebuild that house and it's built in a totally different way than you did it before. And it's filled with natural materials, you know, none of this, you know, none of the horrible crap that goes into it. But yeah, I, I think that that that's the single most important thing, you know, in that transformation is, is saying I'm worthy. I'm worthy to be here and I'm worthy to have an opinion and I'm worthy to, to be loved and worthy to have success, whatever, however I define that. Um, and that's, that, that's really is the impetus to push that journey even further along. I, I think about how most of us are around the same age, the three of us, right? So fifties um, or above and born in the seventies and then raised. And now as I'm older, I look back and I forgot what network has, maybe it's CNN where they're like the eighties, the nineties, uh, the two oh, yeah. thousands. And it's like a retrospect. And so we see how we're programmed. And I was, you know, I was in my teens and I'm, of course, it's the eighties generation where like success is everything. Oh, right. Yeah. And you have to build this thing up and it's just whoever has the greatest, shiniest, hottest, whatever, those are the people that are really successful. And so yeah. then we go through our lives and then we form our careers and then we have kids and yet we're left with this self-doubt. And then there's just this nagging. And then, so yeah, back to your point, George, I'm going to fill myself up with garbage because <laughs> I hate who I am. I'm a big gump, you know, dumpster and I'm just going to put garbage dump in, you know, that's all I'm going to do is going to put garbage yeah. in my dumpster like all day long. Yeah. And, and hopefully, I, and I've heard it so many times with so many people, I could give a shit anymore. You know, I don't care. I really don't care. If I died tomorrow, it'd be no big deal. Um, nobody would miss me anyways kind of deal. And I'm like, back to this point, man, I, whether it's, you know, you heal your own trauma or you've touched psychedelics or you've engaged in a meditative practice, maybe you started Wim Hof breathing and you realize, oh man, I'm feeling something in the center of my head every time I do Wim Hof breathing. Yeah. And then I lay back and I can close my eyes. And for the first time, I don't feel any of my thoughts. I don't, I don't have a thought. This is incredible. You can calm your mind down. Maybe that's the impetus that says, holy shit, I'm bigger than what I am. And then an awakening happens. And that's, that's, I just, I pray for the world. I really do. I pray for so many people that they have this kind of awareness. I'd love to go over to Europe and spend some time over there and see how many people are like, no, man, I love myself. You know, Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't sit on social media all day long and realize that I'm, I'm, I'm nothing (laughs) or I feel like I'm nothing. 
So um, that's probably another big part of this. And maybe we, we yeah, should have yeah. talked about that in heal as well as, I mean, and you, mm. you did mention it, avoiding this. So you did in, in, yeah. in snippets about avoiding social media. Yeah. I think putting these, this is a computer. It's not a phone. It's a handheld yeah. computer and it's filled with stuff in there that can make you feel good about yourself or make you feel bad about yourself. And um, that's just another step. Another one of those, those pieces that we have to heal to get over. Yeah. And we can't talk yeah. About it, it, the, the social media is a great example, Graham. You know, when we were, Jenny and I did this road trip uh, a couple of years ago and we visited friends along the way. And as we were traveling, all their Facebook posts were, you know, look at me I'm on the beach and I'm this and that. And then we go visit them and we have a real conversation. And it's like, my child just tried to commit suicide. Uh, I'm getting a divorce. Um, you know, my spouse cheated on me, whatever. And it's like, whoa, 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 wait a second. All your social media profile, you know, we, I, don't, I don't confront him like that, but that's in my head. I'm thinking, wait, all your social media is, you know, I'm, I'm oh, smiling, life. I'm happy. And then you say, people don't understand me. Well, they don't understand you because you're not speaking your truth. I mean, I don't know if I want a whole feed of people. I, actually, I would love a feed of people saying, hey, here's my truth. I hate my job. I kicked my dog and I um, I can't get over myself. I would love to see that because that's okay. That's the first step to saying, okay, now you have this awareness. What are you going to do with it? Rather than just uh, because so someone who is depressed or is fighting or, you know, their son just did commit suicide, did, did uh, kill themselves. Um, you know, if they see a post like that, that the, because the, the comparison syndrome is so strong on social media, you know, oh, they got a hundred likes or a thousand likes and I got one or no one even commented on mine. That person has 50 comments. And uh, yeah, I almost think that social media in a way, although this is going through social media, so I can't totally bash it completely. But in so many ways, I think it's just another symptom of our of our, of our trauma that, that we feel, you know, I was thinking about this the other day, you know, again, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we wrote letters or we called people there was no texting. There was no posting on social media. We had to actually interact with people and now we don't. And I, I fall, I fall victim to that sometimes too. It's like, I'll just send you a little note and, on social media rather than picking up the phone and calling you. And uh, because it's just that it made it that easy. So I don't know what the answer for that is, but it's definitely an issue that's involved with it too. I, I've never made friends like I've made through plant medicine. <laughs> I have never made greater friends like I have through plant medicine. It's astounding. Uh, and you talk about it in your book in Heal, you know, that your friends will change. Yeah, um, they do. They do change. I just, I've just slowly like lost contact with them unless there are those like man i don't know what you drank but dude i want some of it and, yep. and i've got some shit going on and let me tell you about it do you have some time and i'm like i always have time to listen absolutely so i always try to be present for people um i think that's another thing that that this is imbued in me is to be way more compassionate good gosh especially you know with fighting cancer you don't have to fight cancer folks in order to build compassion you can do that on your own uh through a wonderful meditative practice but yeah, i just wanted to hit on that um just yeah. another point yeah. You know, sometimes I wonder, uh, there's this, there's this wonderful thing called biomimicry and we try to use it in order to make our lives better. And it's essentially looking at the environment and mimicking it, like mimicking biology. And I'm wondering if maybe that's not what's going on right now when we're starting to have more of the plants as allies, like the same way that like a virus hijacks our immune system and starts creating cells for itself and then the people get it's contagious like you get sickness it spreads everywhere it seems to me like what the plant medicine community is doing is they've hijacked that process and now they're making wellness contagious like mm -hmm. the same way like you have empathy like it's changing your friends it's changing your relationships that's called contagion like you're breathing wellness like this book alone heal randall is like so many cool authors in here, so many wonderful stories in here. Yeah. And it's a way for everybody to share their inner validation and triumph and over trauma. 
yeah, we have a guest that says, why do we feel a need to solely post the good stuff? It's because we're looking for external validation. Yeah. But if, if we can have wellness be contagious, now it's this internal vulnerability that's contagious. Like, hey, I'm going through some shit right now. I, I could use a I could use an ear. Okay, I got you. I'll hold some space for you. That kind of contagion is going to be what changes us to an authentic individual instead of someone that was been conditioned to seek external validation. Like I, I see that coming, man. And I, I see it in the way. Graham is able to come in and, and, and go through his journey, the way Randall's going through his journey, my journey, like all of us coming together. Hey, we're, we're all part of this giant system that's changing from the ground up, man. Like, what, yeah. Give me some feedback on that, guys. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think, uh, George, I told you this story, and Graham, I, th I think you know it too, but I, the perfect example, I think, is this power of, of – the, con the greater consciousness is the triumph over trauma. I never planned to write one book, let alone two. And in fact, Jenny says, stop doing any more plant medicine because I we don't need another book. <laughs> but you know, it was at the, at, at the end of an LSD journey that, again, ineffable, I can't tell you, it wasn't a voice, it wasn't words, it was some kind of energy, but I don't know, I can't describe it, but it was like, you're going to write this book but it's not going to be about you. It's going to be about the storytellers. And I ran inside, grabbed a pad of paper, ran back out. I was on the deck on a beautiful summer day. Felt like I had to go right back to the same spot that I wouldn't get the message again. And I wrote down the the what I heard. And 90% of Triumph Over Trauma is from that original outline that I got from the medicine. So I think there is definitely something to the plants and, and even beyond that, uh, that was an LSD journey, but that still LSD still has, its, has its basics in nature because it's from a fungus on wheat and, and rye. But uh, yeah. And so it, it, it was like, and it sounds ridiculous to people that maybe haven't done psychedelics or, or but, and I'd heard about digital downloads before, but I hadn't had that was my first digital download, but it was powerful and it was like, yeah, this is going to help save, you know, you're not doing it. The storytellers are doing it, but they're going to help save people's lives through telling their stories. And so with heal, I just sort of followed the, the medicine's advice and said, well, yeah, this, let's do gather some more stories. And then, yeah, let's bring in the collective and get some experts in their field to say, here's how to find someone like me, a microdosing coach or a, 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 a forest bathing coach or something along those lines or a nutrition coach for those who need the extra help. Yeah. And I, and I, I do, I do my first round of heavy psychedelics. It was, it was an MDA MDMA experience uh, with some other plants that were, that were put into my system over about an eight and a half hour period. I lost three and a half pounds. I was, but I only have like little snippets of when like snapshots. I remember being, in my body, I felt like I was like on a raft, um, on a river with shade over it on a blistering hot day. And the water was like 58 degrees. It was like this perfect where you can feel the coolness and the heat, but you're just being moved along. Uh, I remember that memory. Um, and as I said earlier, it's like it, it, that going down that river and the forgiveness of what happened to me and forgiving everything that had happened to me and releasing that energy from the sacral chakra and my heart just got opened up and I didn't know what to do with this stuff. Right. So I, you know, I integrated for three days wow. after my journey, I didn't get a proper integration because it was late. I mean, the, the ladies were exhausted. They were, they had to have been exhausted. They were like, what the hell is this? I mean, <laughs> it, like, you're, they knew exactly what would happen, but it, it was, it, it was just the wildest thing. Um, true story. Right before we go into the journey, I start feeling like it's coming over me and I feel like I had like shotgun nine IPAs. Like I was like, <laughs> holy cow, this is crazy. And the world starts coming in, you know, kind of closing in. And I see a white possum walking along the fence line. And those ladies are like, that's a symbol of rebirth of youth. And when we went in there and we started going, and I mean, the tears flew out and I'm getting goosebumps talking about this. Mm -hmm. How did this work? So whatever that was, two weeks later, I, I, I integrate for three days, trying to piece it all together. It rained for three days where I was. And I mean, I'm, I had to rebuild my psyche. My wife says, you were like a teenager for like, you were a young kid for the first day, wow. a teenager wow. the second day. 
and then you were back to being normal on the third day. Uh, I tried to go lift weights. I couldn't get anywhere near where I could lift. I was like, I had no top end strength at all. I was like, this was a mistake. And what did I do? I walked out of the gym. I found a tree and I just stood up underneath it. I was like, this feels really comfortable. <laughs> so, you know, it was that, that energy that came through and it made these connections. I didn't really do anything for HB 1802 other than find all the heavy hitters who were going to testify. And I mean, they, everything just lined up. I mean, God, guys, we got legislation passed in Texas in six months. It never happens, especially in a conservative state like this. We had total buy-in. There was people in committee crying. They could feel it. This energy which went through me, which went through Marcus, which went through Amber, which went through Andrew, which, which, uh, which also went through um, um, Morgan Luttrell. He testified. Yep. That all went out to committee. I mean, like, I, I, I couldn't believe it. And then it passed 134 to 12 in the, in the House and 25 to 5 in the Senate. Governor Abbott never had the ink, put any ink on it, and it passed. So here's here we're sitting here. We got about $4 million uh, that's going to be used towards psilocybin research for veterans in Texas. The program hasn't started yet. That was two years ago. We're waiting for this program to start. But thankfully, we've had 43 other states kind of copy what we did this last legislative cycle. And then we have other states that are just opening up to this. So, man, the future looks bright. The future looks bright for healing, for psychedelics, et cetera. No. And, and, you yeah. know, I, I was inspired by Graham and others, uh, you know, Washington state where I am is a little slow. They keep passing research bills and it's like, yeah, the research has been done people, no. but that inspired us to start uh, a, a little political group here with a, we call it enlightened Spokane. And it's designed to try to, we're not calling it decrim anymore because I guess people on both sides of the party Party lines don't like decriminalization. They we're calling it deprioritizing yeah. and making the lowest, you know, lowest level for for the uh, police police uh, department. But again, you know, we're hopeful. Every little piece gets us there. And that, again, I think that's the other thing too. Is with healing, you just feel this need to help. I mean, Graham's a perfect example of that, and all he said, including helping with these books. And then same with my, with these books, but uh, and then starting this enlightened uh, organization because if we just sit here with our healing, that's I mean that's fine. You could do that, but I think the healing almost just gives you a ratchets it up the next level and says, okay, well, I'm healed, but now how can I help my brother, my sister, uh, heal also, and and you know give them a hand up, whatever hand, whatever way that is, whether it's a book, whether it's an organization, whether it's a, a bill that makes it um, legal or the rescheduling, hopefully, of MDMA later this year by uh, the, at the federal level. We'll see. But yeah, I mean, just keep, we just have to keep that energy moving forward. It's sort of uh, one hand helping the other hand. And George, you're and, doing a great job with this podcast. I mean, you yourself, you're being a beacon uh, to try to get yeah. the message out. You know, Randall's trying to do it and be, you know, get the message out. Um, my friends kind of call me the Pied Piper. Um, I have that, I guess, that innate talent of getting people to go along with with something. Um, if I'm passionate about it and I know it works, man, I want you to have it, right? So, I, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of vocal about it. My wife's like, don't talk about psychedelics again. <laughs> <laughs> talk about my medicine at my event, please. And I'm like, it work. <laughs> and guess what happens? Can't they help it. All, dude, everybody, I and Randall's seen it, and you've yep. seen it. Yep. People they don't know it. They can see the, it's almost like they can feel the energy around you. And I go, I feel compelled to tell you about something that has been happening to me and, and I need to talk to you about it. Really. And I'm like, yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> and I love that when people come up to me and do that. So my yeah. wife comes over to me, she's like, God, you're talking about this again. I'm like, babe, they're coming up to me. They're talking. To me. <laughs> I can't help it. And so it's, <laughs> it's funny. She's like in the interior design world and um, there's, there's some really hip interior designers and they're, they're kind of coming out of the closet. They're like, wow. Yeah. So you do this too. And this, this healed me. So many women, so many women had sexual trauma and they won't talk about it and they don't want to talk about it. It's the best part about going to journey space for me is to see these women helping each other. The ones who've really gone through some bad stuff and then they became healers themselves. You know, one of them, a real good friend of mine, I've introduced her to uh, to Jesse Gould, 
uh, Tennessee, Tennessee Scanio. She's a, a Reiki master. Um, she just went through Sound Mind. She's now a facilitator. She's going to be doing work in Jamaica and uh, I think up in Oregon. And um, yeah, she's she's phenomenal. Um, we've had therapists, actually licensed medical therapists that are there um, that, that come into the group. Psychiatrists are in the group. Psychologists are in the group. Man, I mean, that. I just want to see more and more doctors get into this. They'll start getting the aha, like, okay, now we need to go back to the root cause. It could be centered on diet. All right, now we'll build from there. We're not just going to attack symptoms. Let's go to the, where do we heal this? So, And, and great. That's the most important thing too, is we've just been putting bandaid on bandaid on bandaid. And yeah. that's what we're living. We're, you know, we're, we're maybe we're the bubble people, you know, we're living with all this protection, but we're not getting to the root cause. And so I thank you, Graham, for saying that. I mean, that's that that's the goal with both these books is you can't, you can't survive with just a Band-Aid, whether that's a prescription pill or your box of Krispy Kreme or, you know, Shopping. whatever it is. Shopping. Shopping or, you know, video games, whatever. Yeah. You know, you yeah. have to heal that deep thing inside you. Um, and yeah, I hope, you know, if we look back at medicine from, you know, a hundred years ago and longer, it was that it was, you know, first of all, they had more time with their, their patients they actually knew their patients. And some of us are yeah. lucky enough that we know our doctors, but a lot of us don't. And they got to the root cause rather than, okay, I have 10 minutes because I have to have so many, you know, so many appointments to fill up my insurance card. So you have 10 minutes to tell me, okay, that's, I have a prescription for it. Good luck. See you next month or next or six months. We'll come do another blood work or whatever. And it's like, no, 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 no. Slow down. And let's, let's truly heal rather than just do these managing of symptoms or band-aids that we're doing right now. I wonder if the audience, many hopefully, and I know the two of you probably have, if you've not seen the painkiller series uh, on Netflix, mm. you, you, you need to. I mean, I just, yeah. it, it exposes where any pharmaceutical company, how bad they can go down the rat hole. And um, they're all about lining, you know, creating the world's biggest house for the, the the manufacturer and distributor of something as toxic as Oxycontin. That's what painkiller is all about. So yeah. it's it's a magnificent series, but I I've watched it twice now. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> I, I sat through it and I said, Don't, you know, my wife, you got to watch this. And we did. And she was like, I can't believe this. And I said, yeah, this is this is crazy stuff. So. I hope everybody who takes away from our discussion today is that there's some nugget, there's some part of this like multi-step process in heal, right? That you yep. can address. Yep. You can start on your journey to climb out. You know, something's wrong. You know, yep. something's wrong. Something's wrong. I mean, so many people are listening to this going, you're right. Something's off. Yep. Yep. And uh, you can pick up this book and man, it, or you listen to it on audible. Um, you, you will start to download Maybe you will get these, something inside of you is going to wake up. I guarantee yeah. you the energy is shifting right now. And if you don't think that you were receptive 20 years ago, you're receptive now. For yeah. sure. What you're seeking is seeking you. You pick up the book, Percent. it'll find you. If you have, if there's something blocking your way, there's an answer looking for you. Randall, what, any closing thoughts, what you got? I I, I think that was a great, a, a incredible session we've had. I think we could go for Another hour. We should, we should, maybe we can, maybe we could do this series every last Friday of every month. And I really enjoyed it. If you guys are up or something like that, but yeah. before I let you go, Randall, what, what are your closing thoughts? I, I think that, um, writing the book, wow. getting the message out there, I, it's on audible. Leave us with, uh, with some nuggets here. Well, one quick thing. Uh, so trying for trauma is on audible, uh, out now. You can grab that today, especially if you're interested in plant medicine, psychedelics okay. and the, and the real truth of them. That's the other thing. The, the, the other thing is we have, um, again, not to sound too conspiracy theory, but there's a, a greater power that has blocked our information. So for like the, the war on drugs yeah. has blocked the truth about these plant medicines and, and plant medicines have been used again, since time immemorial, we have evidence of that. So, so, so we've been lied to about that. And, and it's a matter of how do we we have to, like Graham was saying, we have to trust something inside us that says, this isn't right. This doesn't sound right. Why Why are these plants demonized when every story I hear is the opposite of that? It's, it's they see angels. How can that be demons if people see, you know, people touch Jesus and, and some see aliens, but whatever. It, it's, it's this 
And then the healing part, that's just the visual part, but the healing part of that. And then with the food, you know, we have been basically been in the wrong, it wasn't so much a lie or, or a conspiracy, but the food pyramid is completely wrong. And that was done just with faulty research that people still believe today. I, you know, I had a discussion with a nutritionist the other day and she was arguing with me that, uh, you know, all beef is bad. And what we really should be doing is having a lot of bread and grains. And it's like, wow, we, we, we killed that bread and grains thing years ago, <laughs> but it's, it, it's so, so part of it is you need to have the inner strength to say, okay, everything I learned in school, everything I've eaten most of my life, the dietary recommendations, the, the recommendations about my, from my doctor, from about medicine, about prescriptions, all the ads I see every time I watch TV about pharmaceuticals yeah. are all an agenda that's not for you. And you need to wake up from that and, 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 make your own agenda and agenda for healing. And so I'd say, yeah, just even if, it, even if you don't get either book, just start looking into these things. Like Graham said, they're, that documentary especially is painkiller is, is painful to watch, but there are many other documentaries, Netflix, Hulu, and other places. Just start looking at this stuff or reading some of these books or, or listening to them or listening to podcasts and, you'll see that there are people out there that are, are trying to get the truth out there and just jump on board of that truth and then find how your truth fits into that truth and go from there. Um, that's, I guess that's my closing remarks. Just, just don't believe all the lies that we've been told all these years. It's a great, it's a great spot to leave it. Graham Randall. I love the conversation. I think it's important. I think both of these books will find a way into the hearts of the people that need to hear this message. And I, I, I invite everybody to, to go and look up Graham, go and look up Randall, do yourself a huge favor and go on Amazon and just scan the back of the book and see if it speaks to you. And if it does look, read it. I, it helped me out. It, and I think that there's so many people. And once you get your story out there, you become part of the solution instead of being part of the problem. So get out there, check out Graham, check out Randall gentlemen, hang on briefly afterwards. I'm going to hang up with the people, but, talk to you briefly afterwards ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for today and uh get ready for us next month on friday so that's all we got i hope you have a beautiful day <laughs> aloha all right thank you